All right, enough derby. How about some quick hits instead? Let's go, Gab. You know where this is going. Uh-oh. Manchester United fall at home Uh-oh. to Tottenham Hotspur. Jules, we'll get to Ange in a minute, but this was a real stinker yeah. from the home team. And I don't think you're going to feel that Bruno's red card, while harsh and in my opinion should never have been a red never card. Never red. That's not enough of an alibi. It's not. This was an embarrassment again for Manchester United and for Eric Ten Hag himself. There was just no plan, no structure again, no tactics. No, I mean, I repeat the same thing every week almost. For the last two years, we've said the same thing and we're here again. Why is he still in charge? Why is he still Manchester United we'll manager? We'll get to that. I've got no... I've got no idea of why, okay. but they were Come terrible on. all that first half. Positivity corner, going no, after no, no, the woodwork. No, 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 no positivity corner. There's no positivity gap. This is, for me, the worst performance they put uh, since Eric Ten Hag is the manager. This was embarrassing, pathetic. I thought about it, then some United fans reminded me that there were worse performances. But um, uh, Even against Coventry, they were not that bad in the first half. What struck me is, this is pretty much his best 11. This is the best 11. I mean, you can say, oh, Luke Shaw, but Luke Shaw hasn't played for United since February, so it's kind of yeah. like a virtual situation. Uh, and you can say Hoyland or Zerk. Hoyland's been back for like three or four weeks. If he's not starting, it's because in this game he chose Zerk's. Yeah. Uh, I think I can reveal, I got a text off our colleague, Mark Ogden, who, as you know, is always very positive about yeah. United. He's just a sunny outlook on life. Completely demolished Zerk's. But then of I course. thought to myself, Zerk's is not the worst player on this Definitely on not. his team. By far, his performance wasn't the worst. But it's not even that it's his strongest 11. This is his 11. This is yeah. the players that he decided to sign. De Ligt, Mouzraoui, Onana, Zergzi. Okay, Garnacho and Menu. he kind of promoted them. Right. He didn't sign them, but he promoted them. Um, Ugarte. Ugarte is his. Mount, we came on, is his. You know, okay, Rashford really is the only one with Dalot who were already there before and kind of established yeah. before. Right. This is really his team. And Gab, what about Spurs? No Hung Min Son? No problem. No problem whatsoever. When uh, uh, Look, I, I think with Tottenham, it is going to be feast, and fa- feast or famine, yeah. the way they play. Um, I genuinely thought that they might run into a problem in this game without Son because Timo Werner, as we saw from the at least two, two sitters that he missed. <laughs> um, you know, he'll give you work off the ball. But Timo Werner still allows you to maintain the balance because he works hard yeah. off the ball. And right? he's a threat because of his pace. And he's always a threat. Yeah. So, like, I, the Mickey van der Veen we haven't even mentioned. Um, ah, yeah. Okay, I don't know what to praise him. Yeah, he's really fast and he runs a long time. He's big and he's got long legs. But the way he sliced through that defense. Yeah. Um, but this lifts the spirit. However... I think the Spurs players aren't getting carried away because we can play like this, but we'll always be somewhat vulnerable at the other end. Yeah, sure. And that is the nature of the way Ange plays yeah. football, right? And when plan A, which is the only plan they have, is not really working, as we've seen earlier in the season, then they struggle a bit. But when plan A is working great, like on Sunday, it's beautiful to watch and well done to them. But even when it's working five. great, you can always concede. Yeah, yeah, of That's course. the they problem. Always, yeah, yeah. Uh, but shout out also to Dejan Kulusevski. I thought oh, huge game. To play him, play me inside is a, is perfect. And that is an engine intuition, yeah, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Back to United. I have to ask the unpleasant question. Yes. Is it time for a new coach? It is time for a new coach. I don't want to see him again. I just don't, I don't want to hear him again because every press conference is an absolute joke. I don't want to see him. He's still asking for more time. How much more time do you want us to give you? How more time? He asked for. It, don't 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 worry about progression. What do you mean? Don't worry about progression. What, if I was a United fan and I'm, I'm wearing this just in memory of George Best, and this is beautiful and this is nice, but almost this team and Ten Hag are not worthy of lovely things like that to wear. It, what do you mean? Uh, don't look about. Don't look for progression. Okay. Improvement. Who's who's coach is saying like it doesn't matter if my players are improving, if my team is improving or not. Who says that? So I go back to this. Um, the, the, the reason, I wouldn't say don't worry about progression, but I think they did the damage in the summer when they extended his deal, which makes it more expensive to sack him. Yeah. There's a whole argument to be made about whether they should have sacked him in the summer and all these new guys coming in. What, you needed to physically be at Old Trafford in your jobs to assess the situation holistically about whether you're going to keep no, Van no, Hag? No, no, no. Ten Hag. All I would say at this stage is Hoyland's just fit. Ugarte just arrived. Um... A lot of these guys, you know, Delict has only played a couple games. I don't see the benefit of sacking him now. I think you have to have goals and 
you can make the call maybe the November break if there's no project if there's no progress. But you have to see how the team how the team responds. I disagree. I would sack him now. Like literally right now. You would. Anyway, Manchester City, meanwhile, are held at Newcastle 1-1, Gabby. And it was just uh, it wasn't just a question, sorry, of Rodri not being there, was it? No, and in fact, I thought uh, Kanji stepping out into midfield, Lewis, Kovac, that's fine. Yeah. So they didn't succeed here because Newcastle, despite having a lot of players out, yeah. um, I thought played really, really well. Erling Holland did not have a good game. Nick Pope made some big saves. And the other elephant in the room, Phil Foden, still hasn't started a game all season long in any competition except for the League Cup, which, as you know, I do not count. Yeah. This man was player of the year last year. I find it extraordinary that we're not talking about him and his absence. Right? Oh, Rodri's not there. Yeah, fine, sure. But other people can do this. I think this game needed the real Phil Foden. I think he played the last 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, again, yeah. Something's wrong. He's not fit, whatever. I'd like to know more about the injury. I, I think this is this is what United, what, what City are missing right now, is last year's Phil Foden. 